The adrenal glands sit right on top of the kidneys, like so. This is the kidney, and this is an adrenal gland. So we have one on top of each kidney, and they have two different sections. Each adrenal gland has an inner component that's called the medulla, and an outer component, which is called the cortex. And kind of similar to, um, to, to the pituitary gland, um, these two different components are made from different embryonic tissues, derived from different embryonic tissues, so they behave a little bit differently, they have different roles. Uh, the cortex, the outer portion of the adrenal glands, is epithelium, and it secretes um, stress hormones, essentially. The inner medulla is neural tissue, and it secretes epinephrine and norepinephrine. So th we've seen these before. These were neurotransmitters back when we were talking about the autonomic nervous system. Um, we're gonna see these molecules again now, and they're gonna behave as hormones instead of neurotransmitters. So the adrenal medulla will start on the inside. Again, it secretes epinephrine, norepinephrine. And in terms of what these molecules do, once they're secreted and they're in the bloodstream, um, they have very similar effects, similar to what we've seen in, with the autonomic nervous system. It's the same molecule, it's gonna do pretty much the same thing. However, um, acting as a hormone, the response is going to last longer than if it was being used as a neurotransmitter. Neurotransmitters get taken back up or degraded very quickly. Hormones are in circulation in the blood, so their effects tend to last a little bit longer, up to 10 times about 10 times longer. So what these do, um, these help to increase things like respiration rate, cardiac output, mental alertness, um, metabolic rate, so the rate at which you're using energy, um, all of that gets increased in response to these hormones, epinephrine and norepinephrine. The adrenal cortex, moving on to the outside of the adrenal glands, the cortex secretes steroid hormones. All of them are derived from cholesterol and collectively, they are referred to as corticosteroids. So cortico, this is referring to the cortex of the adrenal gland. Um, corticosteroids, they are steroid molecules. And corticosteroids um, they have a few different roles. The one that, that probably we're familiar with the most or gets talked about the most is the, the stress response. Cortisol is our stress hormone. Cortisol is a corticosteroid. Uh, but there are a couple of other important roles that corticosteroids do as well. They help maintain the mineral balance, so, um, sodium and potassium ions. We know how important those are in terms of the nervous system just being able to function normally. Um, so corticosteroids help to maintain that mineral balance correctly. And then they also help regulate um, the rate at which we process glucose and use glucose, so glucose metabolism. And of course, that's a very important role as well. Um, we're going to focus in on the stress response for just a minute. Um, so cortisol, this is something that's secreted by the adrenal cortex. And there's an interesting tie-in with cortisol and the brain. Um, so if you'll recall back when we were talking about the brain and the nervous system, there are certain regions of the brain that have receptors for cortisol. And so um, when we are stressed, when we experience stress, that does influence what the brain is doing. Um, one of the ways that it influences what the brain is doing is through the action of the anterior pituitary, which we just talked about in the last section. So anytime that you are undergoing perceived stress, and this is kind of an important word, so you perceive it, you're aware of it, uh, your brain knows about it. If you have a perceived stress, what that will do is cause the hypothalamus to make the anterior pituitary secrete more adrenocorticotropic hormone. And that hormone is going to circulate to the adrenal glands and the adrenal cortex will become more active. So it'll increase the production of cortisol and other glucocorticoids. Um, so cortisol levels increase in response to perceived stress. This can be a very good thing in the short term. This is what allows us to um, properly recover from events like surgery or, um, or tra trauma of some sort or illness. Um, this is a good thing because it's inhibiting, right here's where it was, was talked about, it's inhibiting the immune system just a little bit. Um, so that's a good thing because it makes the immune system not over respond to those short term events that you're trying to recover from. Um, if the immune system over responds, then you might end up in, more serious, ser in, in a more serious way because your own immune system might be attacking certain things that are going on in your body. 
Um, so that's good in the short term so to suppress the immune system in those cases. In the long term, so this would be talking about more like chronic stress, this is not a good thing. In the long term, this can be very unhealthy um, for multiple reasons. So for one, just suppressing the immune system long term, you can imagine, well, that's not going to be good. We have an immune system for a reason. And if you suppress it for too long, then there might be um, infections or other problems that just sort of go un unaddressed in the body. So that's not good. Um, but this can also lead to to other issues like even the development of diabetes or it can make diabetes more difficult to manage um, and it can also cause different different sort of symptoms so cortisol can also contribute I think we mentioned these in the last chapter it can contribute to memory loss so the hippocampus doesn't do quite as good of a job as of processing memories at night um, but also anxiety and depression can result so long-term stress we all know long-term stress is not good here are some of the specifics of what, what it's doing it's through the action of cortisol that these things happen oh, by the way I wanted to say one other thing so um, sometimes there are drug treatments that can be given that sort of use, make use of this system. So glucocorticoids can be given exogenously, so in, in a drug form, to treat various conditions. And um, just to give a couple of examples of that, so um, hydrocortisone cream, this is sold over the counter. Hydrocortisone um, is it's cortisol, is what it is, and it can be applied to the skin. It's an anti-itch treatment, so if you have an itchy patch or if you have eczema um, that is mild, a lot of times just using hydrocortisone over the counter can help to suppress that. And all it's doing is um, inhibiting inflammation. So it's preventing, again, the immune system. It's inhibiting the immune system just a little bit. So this can be a very useful thing. This is also good for um, after a transplant. So make helping the body to not reject the new organ that's been transplanted in um, glucocorticoids are are very good for doing that so these can be very effective drug treatments in different situations